Hey guys, Josh from Sportitude here, and it is your review time, and we're doing it on the new and improved Kano 26. This shoe right here now, it is a little bit dirty. No surprises here. I've done some running in this shoe. I've had it for roughly about three weeks now um, in the pre-release to the Kayano 26, which is coming 1st of June 2019. Okay, now there is a lot to talk about with this shoe in comparison to where it's come from in the, uh, pardon me, the Kayano 25. Um, and uh, with all my reviews, as you know, I like to start from the ground, go midsole, then talk all things upper, and to hopefully give you enough information at home to see if the 26 is gonna be a shoe you could consider. So, without further ado, let's get stuck in. Okay, we'll talk about the outsole first. Now, with the outsole, midsole, and upper, there is considerable changes from the 25 to the 26. So, please get a pen and paper and take note. No, I'm just kidding, but here we go. Let's talk all things outsole first. So, what this shoe is engineered for or designed for, you've got to remember, it's designed for an overpronator, okay? So, the runner that comes down on the heel, and as they go through to mid-stance, before toe-off, we'll see some tibial rotation or medial sort of collapse in this arch through here, okay? So, this shoe is designed to cater for the runner that does roll in over their arches. So that's important to know because the outsole, midsole, and the upper all have components engineered in this shoe to minimize that impact on the running cycle. So getting to the outsole, what we've got through here is we've got in the 25s over here, we've got ASIC's guidance line. Now you can see my finger all the way through, going through this trussic beam, through to that forefoot. The guidance line has been engineered by ASICs and has been used for a number of years to provide a smooth transition, almost like a map for the foot to follow from its heel to its toe or face. We've almost done away with it in the 26 through here. So what we've got is, we've got a sort of guidance line which comes through and almost goes further to the lateral side. And then you can see the outsole is encapsulated through here. So like, unlike the 25, which it was split sort of lateral side and medial side with that guidance line, the pod's sat in through here and here and here. So that split the two different sides of the shoe. It might be hard to see, so I'll just bring it a bit closer through there. So you can see in this shoe, lateral and medial side are split in the outsole with that guidance line that runs straight down the middle. What we've got with the 26s is we don't have that. The guidance line stops there, okay? Or guidance philosophy stops there. And then you've got the outsole that sits across the medial to lateral side all the way through that forefoot. So why ASICs have done that is to provide a slightly more stable toe off through that gait cycle because a lot of the change in this outsole has a lot to do with the midsole, which we'll get to in two ticks. So the heel is split from the forefoot with this thermoplastic beam which sits across the middle of the arch through here, okay? So the heel cushioning, uh, heel outsole and cushioning system is all technologies back through here. Mid-start support in conjunction with the Dynamic Duomax through here, that truss heat beam provides a nice stable um, sort of setup when you're going through a heel to mid-start, so that, that beam plays a really critical role keeping your foot nice and stable. And then as you come through to the forefoot, as we touched on before, the forefoot stability of the outsole that goes the whole way across provides a slightly more stable, but a nice flexible toe-off as well. Okay, let's dive into the midsole with this shoe. Now, there's a couple of take backs to a few years from now. So when we're looking at the 25, pardon me, you can see the lateral or the exposed um, gel cushioning system is relatively flat and seamless and it ties in quite well with how the midsole is constructed, the back through here. It's sort of hardly noticeable, but visually you can see it. Enter the Kayano 26, we've got almost like a three-dimensional concept through here of that gel pod. Now, if you go back to your catalogs and you look at, I would believe this has come from the Kayano 17, all right? So we're going back a number of years now where they took this expo or this um, exposed gel construction and they've re-engineered it into the 26. Now, I can't tell you why they've done that. And to be honest with you, it hasn't made any difference in regards to the feel underneath the foot. I, from the 20... Five to the 26, I wouldn't say one is softer than the other in the heel unit because of that gel pod. Now, where the magic happens in this shoe is you can see the white foam set up through here. That's your flight foam cushioning system. So flight foam is their lightest foam that they use, ASICs that is. And then the blue line through here and the blue to gray fade through there and on the medial side, that sort of top layer midsole, that's flight foam propel, okay? Flight foam propel, quite a mouthful. But the propel system, as its name suggests, is a very responsive cushioning system. So the reason they've got it through, predominantly through that forefoot, is to provide a nice snappy forefoot toe off. Now, um, as you can see, we touched on before, with the additional flexibility through that forefoot through there with the horizontal grooves, 
Having a more responsive forefoot in conjunction with that setup will provide a very similar ride to the 25, so you're not losing stability, you're not losing feel. You just get a more responsive, snappier gait cycle as you go through to that toe of face. And as we come around to the medial side through here, we've got dynamic joy max system. So between my finger and my finger through there, you can see the white foam, how it sort of slightly grades away through that mid starts face. So, and the dynamic joy max, as I touched on before, provides a little bit of extra support and stability for the foot that does roll in over that arch. Okay, so it's not as heavy as it used to be with the dual density systems of years gone by. Now, I'm not talking 25, we're going back a number of years now, sort of your KRNO 17s and 18s where the Duomax system was a relatively weighted construction, which added support, but it added weight to the shoe. Enter the dynamic Duomax, which has been on the market for a couple of years now, and the Canon 26 have followed suit using that technology for arch support. Now, as we come through and talk all things upper, I'd like to touch on the heel counter first. We've got that external heel counter construction, which was introduced a few years ago in the Meta Clutch system, which they used in the Meta Run, and then in, rolled over to the Kayano series, okay? So we've got the ASICS Dual Counter 25 through here and here. You can see there is not a lot that has changed. It's almost a same construction. A couple little tweaks in regards to adding a little bit more support through this middle of your cow canyon, so the back of your heel through there, to give the shoe a wee bit more support in that external beam in, com in comparison to the 25. So a subtle change through there. Then we talk about what we see inside the collar through here around the heel unit. It's not quite as thick as what I experienced in the 25s. So not that this was too thick and, and too padded, but it is a little bit more, there is a little bit more foam at the back of the 25 than what I experienced to the 26. Now, it's probably a good thing. I don't like to have too much foam. Um, it sits around the back of my heel collar, but I found this to be certainly enough padding to provide a plush feel on my foot, but it didn't feel like my heel was being suffocated by it. Uh, sort of additional oodles of foam through there. So that's all things heel counter. As we're coming through to the midsection of this shoe, we're talking around the arch area, okay? So what ASICs have done with the ASICs logo is almost works like a bit of an overlay, just provides a wee bit of cosmetic support um, around that arch system. Nothing that's gonna be restrictive or provide any, I could say, rubbing or irritations um, as you go through your mid starts. But as compare it to the 25, which you can see underneath this gray mesh, you can almost see like an orange setup. It's hard to see, but you should hopefully um, um, get a bit of a glimpse of it. That little underlay construction just provide a little bit of extra arch support um, on, in regards to the upper through here, okay? So just provided a wee bit more grab on the medial side of that foot. But in regards to the 26s, they haven't used that underlay system. They've used more the sort of the cosmetic paint paneling as such on that medial side to provide a very similar construction to the 25. Coming through to the forefoot now, this is where the magic happens for me. Um, reason being is, um, if we talk all four things forefoot in Kayano since the 23 to the 24 to the 25 and now the 26, guess what? From the 23, we went a little bit deeper to the 24. Then from the 24 to the 25, a little bit deeper. And then we've done the same thing with the 26 here. So usually on that scale, you'd probably expect a really boxy feel in the toe box. However, it's only been an incremental increase every single Kayano over the last four years. And that's been the same thing here in the 26. A subtle increase in depth in regards to the 25 to the 26. So to the point where you wouldn't be able to notice it to the naked eye, but putting it on your foot, um, having a little bit more wriggle space with that toe is really, really nice. I like it because remember, this shoe is designed for someone who is spending plenty of time out on the road, out on the pavements, and pushing out some serious Ks. And when you're pushing out long miles, you want a shoe that's going to cater for a little bit of swelling in that forefoot. Um, so a little bit extra just extra space for swelling to provide a nice comfortable feel right through your miles um, to the end of your longer runs. Okay, now using a engineered jacquard mesh, which I've done previously in the 25s as well, just a couple of subtle changes to it. Um, it's a nice supportive overlay system through that forefoot, so um, you won't have any issues with your toe busting through the end. Um, actually, haven't had that for a number of years with the Kayano. Um, but the shoe itself is nice, strong, but a very light and breathable feeling upper. So you still get plenty of ventilation through this shoe, which is vitally important, um, depending on whether you're running... Summer, spring, autumn or winter, you still want plenty of ventilation through your foot and that's what this upper does for you, the runner. Okay, and one little subtle change I will touch on is the laces. Now, 
uh, I do have here a, a sort of a pre-release of the Kayana, and I do hope everything about this shoe stays the same. I'm sure it will. I have been notified by ASICs and saying it will. But the laces are a little bit thinner in comparison to the 25s. Now, not that this is going to make or break any of you at home, but I like the new lace setup. It sounds crazy. It's probably the cheapest part of the shoe, but I do like the fact that it's a fraction thinner because I can get a slightly more customized feel in regards to the lace and construction in my foot. So if I need to loosen it and pr provide a little bit more depth in the midsection, I can. And obviously, and providing a nice customized fit around the back of my heel. When I go for my runs, I do like to get that heel lock lace set up. So um, it's only a subtle change, but I thought I'd make you aware at home because if you've been using Kayanas for years, you probably want to know everything that's changed. And yes, the laces have slightly changed. Cool. So there we have it, guys. Uh, that is my take on the new and improved Gel Kayano 26. Um, if you've got any comments on this video, please drop them below. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Sportitude, and um, we'd love to give you as much information to the runners all over the world um, to help you with your shoe selections to make you a better and more improved runner. And until next time, happy running. We'll see you soon.